Thanks for joining us on the Howie Games YouTube channel. If you want to get more of this content, just down there, hit subscribe. Also, these are only chunks of the full audio podcast. You're only hearing part of Ian Botham. The full episode is on the Howie Games podcast feed, so please go and check it out. Now, Ian Botham, heavily involved in my first cricket memory, probably the first time I cried watching cricket. Lily Thompson trying to put runs on, put runs on, put runs on to win an Ashes Test match at the MCG. And then, of course, on came Beefy. Now I want to ask you about another uh, cricket match. My first ever cricket match I can remember, Beefy, indulge me for a moment. I'm a young man living in Perth. It is the Ashes, 1982 at the MCG, the famous Thompson Border Partnership, which when mm -hmm. it came to its conclusion, Beefy, believe it or not, and I can remember this clear as day, uh, we'll set up in a moment what occurred, but Channel 9, it would have been, in Perth, we're in a P&O Cruises ad break. I can remember clear as day, Beefy. I was like six or something. And as they came out of the ad break, Jeff Thompson was walking off with his head bowed. So we didn't actually see what you'd done to us yet again. And I can remember it clearly. But again, uh, uh, 9 for 218, requiring 74, Border and Thompson, AB, my first ever sporting hero because of that. And in 74 to win the test match with the last wicket, uh, 37 on the final day. There was no one there, Beefy. Tell me what happened that day. Well, there wasn't. You're absolutely right about no one being there. Um, they actually opened the gates up at the MCG. And, you know, we all know what Victorians are like with sport. Yeah. You know, they, they, they'll be there. And typical Victorians, uh, who are probably some of the best sports uh, supporters anywhere in the world. Mm. And uh, we went out there at the start of the game and whatever they needed. Uh, I think it was 74, the, the overnight score. Did they, it was, it no, it's that, 74 right? overall and 37 on the last morning. So they've done their bit that night and we all thought, oh, well, you know, it can't go on. And I think the Australian public thought it couldn't go on. And uh, we went out there and there was about, oh, there'd probably have been about two or 3,000. Yeah. Not much more than that. We went out there and these guys are bowling and Bob will have said this guy bowling and that guy bowling and I'm looking at the scoreboard and it's getting closer and closer and by now there's 10,000 in the ground and then by the time they wanted 10 to win there's probably 40,000 in the hmm. ground. You know, they just came, came from nowhere. They emerged supporters from all over the place. Typical. And um, uh, I said to Bob with a wanting, I don't know what you wanted, four or five runs or something stupid. And I came out, I said, Bob, you know, uh, I kept on walking past him with my arm like this. You know, uh, it's, uh, I'm not broken. It's not broken yet. It's still all right. So you hadn't bowled? Uh, yeah, I hadn't bowled. I didn't right. Bowl I didn't know that. So he threw me the ball and I said, well, thanks for giving me a lot to work with. <laughs> and uh, went in there and uh, came in. Nice little, um, the swinging half volley, you know. <laughs> the, you know and Tomo's eyes lit up. And he went at it, nicked it, and then uh, Chris Tavare at second slip did his utmost to cock it all up and put palmed it up in the air. And Jeff Miller ran behind, caught it, and came all over. Um, yeah, so I have to say that Tomo was pretty uh, pretty upset there. Uh, and I mean, Tomo, you didn't re you don't really associate Tomo and emotion, do you? Not not, not on no. the sports field. And uh, you know, he's a great guy, Tom. I, I love him to death. I think he's he epitomises me, uh, an Australian quick bowler. You know, yes. I'd rather be surfing, but I'll run in the flippers and uh, bowl as fast as I can. But um, but uh, he went in there, and he was he actually uh, had a go at us in the dressing room, walked, stormed into his dressing room, blah blah blah, and everything. He was just all <laughs> over the place. Anyway, about half an hour later, he came in and sat down over here and. Um, but you know, it, it hurt him. It hurt him a lot. I don't. I reckon if you ask Tomo, that would probably be the thing that hurt him most in all the sport and career. Yeah. Uh, because he and AB did an amazing job, and AB kept him going. And you know, you know, I've always said there should be a bronze statue of AB outside every cricket ground in Australia, mm. because what when he took over Australian cricket and he had to crack the whip, and no wives, and he got the nickname Captain Grumpy. But he, he went through it all. An Australian cricket, you know, you look at the side that he developed and the way that the captains after that 
inherited and the, you know, the great side, but it all started with Alan Border and his mindset. And uh, I, I get on really well with Abe. I spoke to him uh, over the Dino thing, of course. Um, but um, no, I've got a lot of time for AB, and uh, I think he's one of the gutsiest players I ever played against. And I suppose in some ways they probably deserve to win that because of the effort they yeah. put in. But having said that, bad luck. <laughs> well, you, you broke my heart as a six-year-old. Hey guys, Howie here. Thank you so much for watching the Howie Games YouTube channel. We really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you watch plenty more clips. Now, if you want to get the full podcast from the clip you've just heard, you can see the full link on the description. If you want to subscribe to the Howie Games YouTube channel, which we would love, just click on the button below. And if you want to see more content from the Howie Games, over to your right, all the clips are there. Thank you once again so much. And as always, peace and love.